So I'm on the Puente Toledo now, on the Toledo Bridge. I actually saw this shot from below and I figured, oh, this make for a great top-down shot. It's like late afternoon. The sun is just fantastic right now. So what I had in mind was using this stone here as just some texture in the foreground and get somebody walking. Ideally, I just isolate like one person down here. Look how long those shadows are. My God. I'd like to use this kind of stone texture in the foreground and just block off even more to really just like isolate one subject. All right, so I'm in Madrid. I just got in late last night. Already loving the city. I knew it was gonna be beautiful. I don't think I realized how beautiful it was gonna be. I mean, just the light, the architecture, of course, and the people too, and just this alternative lifestyle that people seem to be living. Alternative, at least compared to the United States. Everyone just seems so much happier, so much more vibrant. So I'm excited to photograph all of that. And what I wanted to do specifically today was one of the things I've noticed looking back at travel photos from this year is always those first couple days seem to be the best photos or at least the most unique. And so I wanted to give a breakdown into my thought process in the first couple days here, just looking for, for novelty. Everything just seems so new. And it's one of those things that, you know, over the course of weeks, you just kind of get used to your surroundings. So I wanted to capture kind of that initial thought process when I first get to a new city, the decisions I make, and also just give a composition breakdown of, you know, what I'm looking for and how I'm composing different shots in different environments throughout the city. Okay, so this isn't a bad scene. This guy, I like the way he's dressed. I like the Spanish flag in the background. I like the sun hitting him. And I can kind of use these trees, actually. Now, if the flag started waving a little bit, it would make for a pretty good photo. And I like how he's framed by the tree and then this, like, stone pillar over here. Oh, if we can get that flag really moving, show off the insignia on the flag. One of the things I'm constantly on the lookout for is people just sitting on benches, especially alone. And I think this is a pretty good scene of this gentleman here sitting on this bench. He's kind of a little bit too much in the shadows, but I'm just gonna try to see. And then I like how I can use these trees to kind of frame him too. And the building behind him is, is nice and backlit. It's got a little texture. And one of the things I'm thinking about too is his gesture. And it's kind of hard to tell, like the, the bench is a little high and it's kind of covering his body. I can try this now just to see. Yeah, that isn't bad. I, I really like the trees kind of leading into them, the shadows of the trees. So I'm going to open up my aperture, get some nice shallow depth of field here. So I really have a lot of bokeh with this tree texture. Here we go, here's a gesture. Okay, so him getting up, that, that actually makes something a little bit more unique. So I didn't have the GoPro on in time, but I liked this shot here. There was a guy on the pull-up bars and there was a cool kind of silhouette with the light behind him. And he just had this interesting gesture standing there. And then he started doing pull-ups and he was just kind of hanging there. So I got one photo, but it felt like it was too busy just with people walking over on the left here. So I backed up and just used this pole here to kind of block him off, give it some texture. And so there's a nice kind of separation between light, shadow, and then light in the background again. So I just stopped to zip up my backpack here and I actually kind of like this. I was trying to capture this like clock tower looking thing and I actually like how these gates frame it. So I've got the clock tower focused. I'm just locking my focus, holding the button. And because there's just a lot of like empty space on the bottom of this grate here, I'm trying to get a photo just to kind of fill out that empty space and add a subject.
I love all these yellow buildings here. Like, does someone maintain this? Does someone paint this every few years? Especially with like the clouds, the blue sky in the background. I'm gonna see if I can find something. Okay, so I really like this composition here with the shoes hanging. I'm gonna wait for someone to get in frame, ideally like crossing the crosswalk here, just to add another, you know, human element to this. Love the cloud in the background. Looks like the shoes are kind of floating the clouds a little bit. Okay, I love this red car with the yellow building reflection here. And just to get like a human element, I'm wondering if I can get this guy jackhammering too. Okay, not bad. Okay, there's a gentleman here. He's like standing next to the trash. I love the way he's dressed. So I'm gonna try to use this reflection, use the yellow building to get him and the gesture here. I'm trying to get his full body. Yeah, so it's something like that. It's pretty good. I actually kind of like this like little piece of paper on the car window. So you can kind of see where I'm looking. Like a shot just straight on as it was probably would have been pretty good, but I just wanted to add, add another element to it and frame him a bit and I don't know, I keep saying this, but have some leading lines there too. And of course, you know, you had the reflection of the yellow buildings off the car. So it just seemed like a no brainer to position him that way, as opposed to, you know, maybe getting closer and just doing like a straight on shot with, you know, just the building in the background and just him. Um, but now there's like more layering and a little bit more depth. That just makes it a little bit better of a photo. walk in this random place and there's just a beautiful church right around the corner from you. All right, let's do the classic frame by trees here. I mean, this isn't bad. I can just get a single subject walking. They're gonna have to walk right by me though. And they're probably gonna walk around me. So, let's see if I can just kinda Post up here. I don't want to impact their movement, but I also want to get the top of the church in frame. <sighs> Looks freaking beautiful. Okay, this is pretty promising. I like their gesture, I like how they're talking. Um, so, I'm gonna post up here and then at the last moment, get into the frame. Check out this reflection. I'm going to very sketchily look around this car. These people are probably like, what the hell is this man doing? Staring inside my car, taking a photo. I'm sorry, sir, but I have to take a reflection. Nothing special, but man, it just looks beautiful. This is definitely a famous church, and I'm just like, oh, wow, look at Churches are in every corner in Madrid. So it's morning now, I'm heading back into the neighborhood of La Latina. I was there yesterday, really like the vibe. So I'm heading back. I'm guessing it's gonna be even better in the morning with just this soft, beautiful morning light that Madrid offers. Okay, I was just walking up this street, Calle Mayor, and the sun is just perfect right now at this time of the morning. Just some fantastic backlight. So what I did was I just looked for something where I can kind of like prop people in again, just isolate a single subject and make it like somewhat unique, add some texture in the foreground. So I found these pillars here and I think it'll, it'll work perfect. So something like this. Great shadows, great backlight. And I love how the shadow's coming right towards me too. 
just these really just long dramatic shadows. an example of when I choose not to take a photo because in theory you know I could just walk especially in Madrid where the light is great you could just walk down every block in the morning and be like oh this is a great photo this is a great photo but that's an example of just how I get a little more choosy so like I'm looking for things in the foreground there's nothing really like interesting or specific to the city in the foreground and then in the background there's no like like if there was like colorful buildings or if there's some nice leading lines into something in the background that would be more interesting but kind of just this plain white building in the background that just isn't anything special so i choose not to take the photo in that situation okay i love this scene here with this church in the background the sun's just coming up over this church. We have this yellow kind of graffiti wall here. And it's just like a line of buses. And they've got some good reflection on their windows. Love just the just low clarity of the building in the background. You get some nice light in the foreground and some nice lines too with the, the wall on the other side. So the only thing that's missing is, you guessed it, an interesting subject. So I'm just gonna hang out here. These buses don't seem to be moving, which I like. So I'm just gonna wait for someone to walk down this walkway. So I'm heading into Centro now. It's midday. Usually I struggle with shooting in midday. I tend to avoid it just because the light is super harsh. I'm a sucker for the golden hours, the softer light, but I'm gonna to try to work with this today. I think these kind of narrow buildings are gonna to work to my advantage. I love all the colors. The colors are really, you know, deeply saturated and popping at this time of the day. And just with the narrowness of the buildings, it makes for some nice shadows like this, for example. So that's not a bad shot, actually. I was waiting for one person to come. I didn't realize it would happen so soon, but just that one guy in frame, I'm wondering if I can maybe play with these shadows a little bit more. Just kind of explain this composition a little bit. I like bringing my camera down kind of using these leading lines here, this pole here. You of course have this like colorful building. You kind of lose the color because it's in the shadow, but you still kind of see the yellows. I like the shadow that this building is making and it's just kind of like framing a subject in there. Yeah, but you can see I'm just like cutting off everything else. I like how this, the right side of this building takes up the entire frame. There's no like other space and you just kind of see his little body. What I'm doing now is just kind of scouting out a spot where I could potentially isolate a subject and just cut off all these tourists. So I'm thinking about like how I can maybe use these poles here and I'm just looking for light and shadow. And what I did, of course, the GoPro was turned off when I first got here, but there was a woman in red and they were just walking into the Palacio. And I noticed that there's some nice contrast between light and shadow right at the entrance and so i took a couple of shots of the woman walking in in red it's a nice contrast in color with just her red and then it's just gray here and you had her body just kind of falling into the shadows which worked really well i'm at the gate now i see this gentleman walking here i like these gold little ornamentations here so let's just see if we can isolate him a bit. It's not bad, I like the gesture. I like the gold in the foreground. I like the like V shape it's making. I mean, that's a, it's a pretty good shot. I don't say so myself. Just out here talking to myself, giving myself compliments. Okay, found a great spot right outside Plaza Mayor. The sun is coming down. 
but it just looks beautiful, just perfectly framed. Now I just want one subject to come in. I can kind of silhouette it. That might be it. Just like perfectly symmetrical right now. The sun looks great. Hey, Simmons here, thanks for watching. And since I've still got you here, maybe you wanna see even more photos from Madrid? If that's the case, consider picking yourself up a copy of Frames from Madrid. It's a, don't call it a zine, don't call it a zine, don't call it a zine, a digital magazine of photos I captured during my time in Madrid. So if you've got a trip to Madrid coming up and are looking to do some location scouting or just looking for some extra inspiration, check it out in the link below. You can purchase it for only $5 or the price of Portrait 400 in 1998.